Hey everyone, uh, in this notebook, we're gonna play with transforming Parquet data at scale on the cloud with Dask and Coil. The backstory here is I'm giving a tutorial next week. And so I brought up the sort of my classic example, the New York City taxi cab data set, which I think everyone's seen like a hundred times. But the tutorial is in New York City, so it'll be fun. And so I was looking at it and I was just opening up the like S3 bucket with all the data. And I usually just zoom right down here to the yellow trip data. This is the yellow cabs in New York City. But I zoomed up actually first, and like there's a new bit of data set here. There's this H FHV and FHVHV data sets. I was like, what are those? And it's actually super fun. Uh, so this is a fun, um, fun variation. So there's the yellow cabs, which if you've been to New York City, you've ridden in. This is the classic yellow cabs of New York City. They're the lesser known, but still awesome green cabs, which are more common in the outer boroughs like Brooklyn or Queens. And there's this FHV, for higher, higher vehicle base, which is like everything else. If you like run like a limo service, you're in this category. But you still have to like send your data to, the, to New York City, the city. Inside of this, there's the high volume category, which turns out to be just Uber and Lyft. I didn't realize this, but like all of this data is public. You can get, I think, all of the Uber Lyft data um, for the last few years. So that's what we're gonna play with. Um, so it's the same old data set, just uh, completely different cars. So uh, I have connected to a DAS cluster that's in the same region uh, using Coiled. It was pretty easy, that's what Coiled does. Um, and I've got a data set here. And let's actually just go and uh, grab one partition. Try the first little bit of that data set, the first few rows. And this is taking a while. And so this data set is actually not, I think, ideally arranged, at least not for use with Python, or at least not with use with Python and Dask. Uh, we're gonna find a couple of problems in this data set. First, these partitions are massive. Uh, this is like a 10 gigabyte partition when it's in pandas. Like it should, we should like repartition it a little bit smaller. Partially that's because the data types are kind of wonky. And so we're also gonna change around the data types. Um, but first look at some data. We're gonna see what's going on. Here we go, we got some data. We've got like something about the license. We've got, you know, when we requested, when they showed up, when they picked up. You know, if you've been in Uber or Lyft, you know, there's like different times in that process. We also have things about, you know, how much uh, the driver made, how much the passenger paid, how much taxes there were, and a bunch of options. I don't know what these options mean, but maybe it's, you know, like, you know, like the, the pool, Uber pool, for example, who knows? Anyway, cool data set, I'm excited about playing with it. But again, it took us 30 seconds to run it, to get one partition out of it. That's gonna be a little bit painful. Um, let's actually grab, let's do DF. Let's see how big one partition is in memory. So let's grab just the first partition. Let's grab memory usage. Let's remember to call deep equals true to get all that string data. And yeah, let's just call compute on that. It's gonna take probably another 30 seconds or so. But while that's running, so look at the other looking at those data types, we see a few things. Um, we see some date times, cool. Those are probably well formatted. We see some float 64s and it's 64s. These are probably like, you know, values of like 10 bucks and 25 cents or something. Like these only be 64 bit bytes, bits. They could probably be 32 bits. So we can like shrink things by half. That'll be a nice savings. Really though, the big savings here is this object D type. Whenever we see object D type um, in a pandas data frame, like it's probably not the right choice. Some of this stuff is string data. We should probably be using pyro strings because they're really compact. Some of this stuff is flags. We're probably using categoricals. It's like yes or no. In fact, we can see that over here on the right. It's just like a bunch of yes, no's. So like this no is costing us like 30 bytes while it should be costing us one. In fact, we can see that about memory usage, you know, some of these things like the pickup date time, eh, it could be smaller if we wanted it to be, but it's, you know, it's decently sized. And then one of these flags is like 10X the size and it should be one tenth the size. So we can make a lot of this a lot more smooth by repartitioning and by changing around our data types. So let's do a little bit of pandas cleanup. Uh, first, I'm making a categorical D type, which is just a yes, no data type using the category, using pandas categoricals. Second, I'm gonna go through all of my columns and I'm gonna turn all of the objects into pyarrow. 
unless there's flag in the name, which I'm going to get a categorical. If you've got a float or an int, I'm just going to like down, downsize you a little bit. And so we have sort of this recommended data types. And so cool, we're going to call as type on that. Let's go ahead and get that running. I'm also at the same time going to reprodition my data. So it's in sort of smaller chunks. That's going to handle larger chunks. Panels can handle larger chunks. But there's really no reason to. The 128 megabytes is like a decent chunk size. 256, also good. Something in that range is, is fine. So this is running now. You can see that we're like, we've got only 41 partitions. I think it's 41 different months. There's one partition per month. And Dask is reading in that data and it's processing that data. I actually started doing this earlier and it actually didn't work because my, my machines didn't have the like 10 gigabytes of data that it needed to have in RAM. So I actually need to go back up and recreate my cluster and ask for machines with more memory. Um, fortunately, Coil made it really easy. Uh, I work at Coil, by the way. Um, but it was a nice thing to be able to do. Okay, so we are off. We're processing lots of things. We're reading a data from, from S3 in Parquet format. We're converting it to Arrow. We're converting it to Pandas. We're converting it back to Arrow. Um, and yeah, we're about halfway done. I'm probably just gonna like skip forward in the video. See you guys in a second. Yeah, cool, okay, we're done. Um, great, let's see how big this thing is. Oh, what's going on, das.utils, here we go. I don't know, what's going on here? Uh, I wanna get some. Yeah, 70 gigabytes, actually not that, not that big of a data set. But it's fun. We're now at a point where we can kind of play with this thing. It's all persisted in RAM. Like, what's the base? I think it's like a base fair thing here. Let's go and play around just very briefly. Um, yeah, base passenger fair. All right, let's get, look at the head of that. Now it's super slick and super fast to come out. Um, let's just like see what the like, how much did these companies make in the last couple of years? Uh, oh, don't want to do head. Yeah. That's a big number. Uh, let's divide that by a billion, I guess. 12 billion bucks. Cool. That's the base passenger fare. I'll maybe we can look at how much like drivers made to, let's see, what do we got in here? Actually, I actually haven't looked at this data set yet, but you can, it's super fun. Uh, driver pay, that looks fun. That's actually not that bad. I was expecting drivers to get less. Uh, kudos, Uber and, I mean, still a weird business, but like, you know, I was expecting that to be a smaller number than that number. Okay, um, yeah, so this data set's pretty cool. I wanna now like save it. It's in a better format than it used to be in. It used to be like hundreds of gigabytes in RAM, now it's 70 gigabytes in RAM. I wanna save this back to Parquet so that my colleagues can play with it and I can play with it in the future without doing this analysis every time. So I'm gonna sort it, because um, that's just like a little bit nicer to you know sort before you're saving. Uh, I'm gonna sort it by the request date time, so like when someone's putting in the app when they want to uh, do things. Let's call that. That's gonna take a minute. So this is like an all-to-all -all data set shuffle. Hypothetically, every data frame has to talk to every other data frame. Um, this is like, the hard thing for Dask to do. There's a lot of exciting work here. We're making this a lot faster, but this is still like a painful, a painful thing for Dask to do. Um, I might skip forward in the video on this one too. No, actually, I can just keep going while that's going on. So once that's done, my data set's going to be partitioned kind of like this. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And I'm noticing that it's like roughly a day of data per partition per 100 megabytes. So I'm actually just gonna make that explicit. Uh, and that'll make it like sort of the saving the files will be better. It won't be like one file for one day and one dial for a day and a half. It'll just be day by day by day. So we're gonna repartition it. And we can use the frequency keyword and we'll do it one day. Um, yeah, let's do that. And then um, I'm ready to save. So 
And Dask is like doing all this work in the background. Dask is fortunately asynchronous, so we can keep doing it work in our note, working in our notebook. So I'm gonna call to parquet down here, but I want the file names to be interesting, not just like one dot parquet, two dot parquet. So I'm gonna pass a name function. Oh no, what's going on here? So my divisions look like this. Yep, one per day, exactly what I want. Let's collapse that. And I'm making a function uh, here, which should take one of those divisions uh, like zero and produce a file name. There we go, exactly what I want. And the 100 partition will have that file name. Cool. And so now when I call to parquet, it's gonna name files with this naming function. I'm gonna drop this in an S3 bucket that I've created. I was playing with it earlier, so I'm gonna destroy it and then remake it, and then we're just gonna save it. So 75 gigabytes in RAM, it's saving now, we can see up above me. Um, and we'll be, we'll be pretty good. After this, we'll have our data set in a much, in a format that's much cleaner for Dask and Pandas to read. Uh, we'll be using string types, we'll be using categoricals, we'll be using slightly slimmer data types. It'll just like make everything smoother in our Python workflows. It's also 75 gigs, like I don't maybe even need a cluster anymore. Like maybe I can work it on that in my laptop. Um, so now the files look a bit like this. So it looks, looks pretty clean, one file per day, well formatted rather than one file per month. Okay, let's pretend that I'm now, let me like go and kill everything I just did. And let's, let's restart our workflow. Now I'm gonna read not from the original data set or from this other data set. And I'm using this, this keyword argument, use nullable D types equals true. This is actually still in a pull request. Uh, Ian Rose is like making Dask respect arrow data types a bit better um, when playing with Parquet. And so we're gonna read that in. Um, and this works pretty well, uh, but there's a, there's a question we're trying to answer. So right now this is using the string type, but not string pi arrow. Uh, so string is still using Python data types, but it like knows that it's text rather than like some other object like a scikit-learn like estimator or something. Uh, Greg Hayes actually proposed like, hey, let's, let's use arrow. If we know arrow is around, let's use it, which is a reasonable thing to do. Uh, Ian says like, yeah, it's a good point, but I'm a little concerned about this. It's, it's a little bit new. Um, Pi arrow strings and pandas are still a little bit experimental. And so we're hesitant to make this on by default. But um, it does have a significant impact. Like I'm actually using quite a bit of memory here. If we uh, take a look at all of the memory use of that data frame, you know, previously when using Pyro strings, it was um, I think like 75, 70 gigabytes. And it was really fast to compute. Like even just like computing how much memory this takes, takes longer now. Um, it'll be something like 200 gigabytes. So there's sort of this open question, do we use Pyro by default? Do we not? Um, it's super powerful. Uh, so anyway, that's it. A few things to take away from this video. Um, this is a good example of just like a data transformation, right? I started with Parquet in one format. I then did a few things. I changed around some data types especially using categoricals and Pyro. And I also repartitioned and I also sorted, right? And those things allow me to kind of really clean up a data set and make it a little bit more analysis ready. Uh, I was able to save and run all of that really quickly and cheaply uh, in a few minutes. This probably, colleague probably cost me a couple of bucks. So um, yeah, we also learned a little bit about how we're thinking about using Arrow in the future and how we can or cannot make a default and how it's gonna change over time. So hopefully this is interesting. Um, and if you're at Pi.New York City next week, come on by, we might play with this data set. So cheers. <laughs>